I care not whether you keep Saturday Sabbath, Sunday Sabbath, or Monday Sabbath, but if we have respect to God or to his scriptures, let us give him a day of his own choice and not another. If Saturday is God's Sabbath day, then why do Christians all over the world go to church on Sunday? Many Bible believers today have followed tradition handed down by previous generations. They believe and were taught that Sunday is the proper day of worship. That the Savior changed the day of worship from the Jewish Sabbath to Sunday. The adoption of Sunday as the Christian Sabbath has little to do with the Bible and everything to do with Constantine the Great over 300 years after the Messiah's death. Constantine was emperor of the Roman Empire from 306 to 337 CE. He was a sun worshiper who on his deathbed converted to Christianity. In 321 CE, while still a sun worshiper, Constantine established Sunday as the day of worship. He decreed, On the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates and people residing in cities rest, and let all workshops be closed. In the country, however, persons engaged in agriculture may freely and lawfully continue their pursuits. In the Council of Laodicea, they passed a law requiring that Christians must not Judaize by resting on the Saturday. The religious leaders led by Bishop Eusebius stated all things whatsoever that it was duty to do on the Sabbath. These we have transferred to the Lord's Day, which was a name they gave to Sunday. Constantine was a brilliant strategist with a distinct political agenda. His cherished desire was to unite the two most influential factions in his empire, pagans and Christians. The first law requiring people to celebrate on Sunday and rest on Sunday was uh, a law promulgated by the Emperor Constantine in the year 321. And he does it without any reference to Christian theology or Christian ideas. He's, he says to abstain from uh, labor on the venerable day of the sun, which is an allusion to the fact that uh, sun was becoming more and more the object of worship. So the first Sunday law requiring people to keep Sunday had no Christian flavor at all. The time was ripe for a reconciliation of state and church, each of which needed the other. It was a stroke of genius in Constantine to realize this and act upon it. He offered peace to the church, provided that she would recognize the state and support the imperial power. In 70 AD, Roman armies conquered Jerusalem and burned the temple to the ground. Uh, at that time, it became very unpopular throughout the Roman Empire to be like the Jews in any way. And Christian churches had recently been established uh, throughout the empire, especially in the city of Rome. And so because of this war against the Jews, it became very unpopular to be like the Jews in any way, and the Bible Sabbath looked Jewish because the Jews kept it as well. And so a tremendous pressure was exerted upon the early Christian churches, especially in Rome, to move away from the Bible Sabbath. But at the same time, Sunday was a day that was recognized throughout the Roman Empire uh, as the day of the sun. The Romans worshiped the sun on Sunday. And so as the Christians were feeling pressure to get away from anything that looked Jewish, they started thinking about this and they said, hey, you know what? Jesus rose on, on Sunday anyway. And so it became a very convenient rash, rationalization to move away from the, what, was, what looked like a Jewish Sabbath and to move towards Sunday. If you've heard the expression, when in Rome, do as the Romans, uh, that really originated over this issue. To some Christian leaders, it made sense to take advantage of the popularity of Sunday, especially since Sunday observance would make Christianity more attractive to the pagans who already worshiped the sun on that day. Was Constantine converted to Christianity or was it the other way around? Who knows? 
But what's important to us today is that what emerged was a different kind of church, a different kind of state. In fact, the two were so blended together, it was hard to see where one ended and the other began. It seems that Constantine's personal religion was a mixture of Mithraic sun worship and Christianity. According to his Christian biographer, Eusebius, he taught all his armies to zealously honor the Lord's Day, Sunday, referring to it as the day of light and of the sun, distinctly pagan terminology. Although Constantine promoted Christianity and built many, many Christian churches, he closed very few pagan temples. And we have a Roman calendar from the year 354. That's about 17 years after the death of Constantine, which has four separate festivals each year to the sun god. It shows that the sun god survived not only Constantine, but into the reigns of his immediate successors. In this coin circulated by Constantine in 317 CE, we see the face of Constantine on one side, and on the other the figure of Sol Invictus, the unconquered sun. The sun god was also known as Mithras, and his birth was on December 25th. This date was adopted as the birth of Christ and became the date for Christmas many centuries later. Clearly, Constantine was an avid worshiper of the sun god Sol Invictus. And so the shift took place gradually, especially in Rome and in, uh, in Egypt and Alexandria. And as time went on, the Roman Catholic Church really became a dominant advocate for Sunday observance uh, as a replacement to the Bible Sabbath. Amazingly, Martin Luther, the champion of the modern day Protestant movement said, they allege that the Sabbath changed into Sunday, the Lord's Day, contrary to the Decalogue as it appears. Neither is there any example more boasted of than the changing of the Sabbath day. Great, say they, is the power and authority of the church since it dispensed with one of the Ten Commandments. Constantine's actions actually favored paganism. However, the corrupt bishops of Rome, desiring greater power, were able to present these actions as favorable to Christians. To conciliate the pagans to nominal Christianity, Rome, pursuing its usual policy, took measures to get the Christian and pagan festivals amalgamated, and by a complicated but skillful adjustment of the calendar, it was found no difficult matter, in general, to get paganism and Christianity now far sunk in idolatry, to shake hands. Nowhere in the Bible do we see that Yahshua and his apostles changed the day of worship from Saturday to Sunday. In fact, the Messiah in his Sermon on the Mount has this end time prophecy. Pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Nevertheless, the Bible itself does not change. And the fourth commandment still says that the seventh day is the Sabbath, not of the Jews, but of the Lord. It is the seventh day, the Sabbath of creation that we need to keep holy. When you can show me from the scripture that there is any other seventh day than the day we call Saturday, the last day of the week, then I might be persuaded that the fourth commandment means some other seventh day besides Saturday. Thank you for watching Thoughts Camera Action. Before you go anywhere, don't forget to click subscribe.